What's up? Hey everybody, it's Lonzo with NetworkVoyage.com. If you don't know where that is, well, let me show you real quick. What you want to do is you want to open up your browser and go to NetworkVoyage.com. And there you will see a magnificent website. It's my study blog. You go to ICD2 because that's what I'm studying for right now. And I have all kinds of notes here. Subnetting, Anycast, IPv6, distance vector protocols, link state, VTP, uh, let's see, calculations for EIGRP, CDP, uh, access lists, rules about access lists, things you want to remember for the exam. Um, links to my videos, which may or may not work. Uh, that's the exciting part. Why don't you just go to my page and figure it all out? Uh, we'll go over dynamic net. We go static net, net overload. Um, this is what my I'm covering right now, baby. Net overload, okay? We're not going to do dynamic, we're going to do static. This lab is going to be a net overload, okay? So everybody knows what that is. There's my video. There's a, there's a sexy guy right there. And uh, let's get started, shall we? All right, so this lab, what this demonstrates is uh, kind of what you'll see on the exam. Possibly, maybe, perhaps, who knows? Something similar, something may not be very similar to this. Anyway, standard scenario, it's going to say something like network technician, works for company XYZ, the ISP is giving them a static uh, usable of uh, the six addresses, 105 through 110. The company has 14 hosts, which need to access the internet. Boom! Simultaneously, baby. That is your keyword right there, all right? When you see something that says simultaneously uh, and it's dealing with something like this, it's going to be net overload, right? Um, then it gives you a private address space of these, let's see, 16 usable addresses, actually 14 usable, um, and you're going to use that to set an access list, all right? So here we go. We are on router weaver. All passwords are Cisco. Here we go. Host name is Weaver. If we do show run, we can see that we ain't got we ain't got Nathan configured here, man. We got an IP address. That's about that's about it. But uh, that's not good enough, right? So let's go to config T. Let's go to interface fast to zero. Let's set this up for IP NAT inside, because that's your inside interface. Everybody knows that. We'll do a no shut on that. And then we'll go to interface. What was the other one? Zero zero zero. Yeah, zero zero zero. And guess what? That's IP now. Ah, IP net outside. Okay. Then you're gonna do a no shut there. All right. Exit. Okay. Now we're config mode. All right. So let's start configuring the three things we need for NAT. First, we need an IP net pool. All right. The IP net pool is going to is going to be represented by these public um, this public space you have. So we have a slash 29, all right? And I lost my window. All right. So we're going to do an IP NAT pool. And let's call it my pool. And here we're going to put the starting address, OK? So that's 198.18.184. Dot 105, and then it's going to ask for an ending address. Well, whoop de doo, how exciting! 198, here we go again. 18.184. What was it? 110? Then it wants you to type in the word netmask. Well, well, well. All right, netmask. It's going to be a slash 29, and that means it's 255.255.255. Two, five, five, two, five, five, two, five, five. That's 24 right there. Uh, then you want to borrow five bits, so that's 248. Got it, people? If you don't know your binary, double check that. I'm right. And uh, basically, borrowing to uh, five bits. If you're borrowing four bits, it's 240. Um, stop there. Borrowing three bits, it's 224. Uh, the other one's 192, and the other one's 128. Uh, that's all you need to do right there. You create a pool. IP net pool. Call it my pool or whatever you want. Put in the public address space, which is known as the global IP, I'm sorry, the inside global addresses. Type in the net mask and hit enter. That ends step one. Step two, you have to create an access list. The access list is going to be specific to 
this inside pool that you're creating here. All right. And by the way, the IP access list is standard IP access list. And a standard means it's going to be 1 through 99. I'm going to pick 40 because 40 is the, the number of the day. All right. Now, the way you start access list is permit or deny. We are going to, um, let's see. Actually, let's go back here. No. No, 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 no. No IP access list. Uh, 40. All right, let's start that over again. What I did was I created a named access list. Sorry. Okay. IP access list. Call it 40. No, you know what I'm doing? Sorry. I'm doing IP, which is a global IP configuration. Okay, no, I don't want to do that. Sorry, guys and girls. It's access list, okay? Because we just want a standard plain Jane, okay? Access list 40, permit uh, 192.168.100, and here's where the fun starts. Here's where the fun starts. I'm going to put the network address, right? Why didn't I put 17 people? Come on, tell me. Because 17 through 30 are the usable addresses. If you look at the subnet mask, we're dealing with the 240 fourth octet binary value. 240 is borrowing 4 bits. The fourth bit has a power of 16. 16 is the first network number. 16 is also the magic number. So 16, it, uh, the, the subnets are going to jump by 16. So the, the next one's 32. First one's 16. All right. 16 is the subnet number. So that means 17 through 30 are the usables. Then you got 31, which is the broadcast address for network 16. Then the next one is 32. That's the next subnet number. All right. So now that you're down with that, now I'm going to introduce you to something called wildcard bits. Okay. So since my subnet mask for this guy down here is 240, um, the way you get your wildcard mask is you subtract 255 from, I'm sorry, you subtract the subnet number that you have, which is 240 in this case, from 255. So 255 uh, minus the other three 255s are 000. zero, zero. And the last one is two, ooh, sorry, 15. Because 240 minus 255, I'm sorry, 255 minus 240 equals 15. So if we're not all confused, let's just keep going. All right, so the second step has been completed. We created an access list 40 permit 192.168.100.16 and with a subnet mask of 240 with a wildcard mask, mask inverted gives us a 00015. That actually takes care of this whole internal group right here. It takes care of 17 through 30. All right. All right. Last step. We're going to do an IP NAT inside source and it wants a list of access list is what we created. So we named ours 40 and we gave it a pool name. We're going to tie it to my pool. And here's the key word right here. If this if this this is the most important step right here. Overload is what you want. All right? Boom. If you miss that keyword right there, then uh, you might miss this question because Cisco does not give acts uh, give credit for, you know, partial credit. It's all or nothing, baby. All right, last uh, word of advice here. You want to do a copy running. I know, I know. It takes too long to type this, but whatever. This is copy running config. And then, of course, the option is startup config. It's going to ask you, sorry, copy running config, startup config. It's going to ask you what the destination file name you want it to be. Startup config, hit yes. Why did I type that long command out? Because if you type right, ma'am, on a simulation on a Cisco exam, it may work, it may not. Okay, so in the real world, yes, we all do right, ma'am. Okay, we could do, uh, what's the other one? Right terminal, is it? Oh, no, that's show run. Um, anyway, just do a copy, running config, startup config. That's your best bet. Now, we should be able to ping from over here back over here and we should be able to see some show IP net uh, statistics or translations. In this scenario, 
I don't have anything hanging over here um, on this side to ping through. So we're just going to have to kind of say that this configuration works. I know it works. I've tested it, but I'm just not going through it right now. So again, the keys are, the key concepts are create IP NAT inside on your internal interface. Um, on your external interface, you want to go ahead and create an IP NAT outside command. That way NAT knows where to apply, which, which interface to apply your access list to because you want to do, uh, oh, your next step is to create an IP NAT pool and call it whatever you want. I called it my pool. Okay. You want to assign your public address space here with the net mask keyword and then whatever the slash, whatever the test give you. Could be a slash 24, which makes it easy. It's 3 for 255 and then 0. Your next step is to create an access list. I created access list 40 and then I permitted the internal addresses from a network wildcard mask point of view. Okay. I grabbed network 16 with the 15 wildcard mask, which grabs 17 through 30. Okay. Then the final step is to create IP NAT inside source list. You tell it your source is your access list 40. Okay. So it's going to look at this and it's going to do an overload on this IP address. You usually want to do something like this with like one single public address. Okay. This scenario, it gives you all these ranges. It just wants to, it just wants to, you know see if you know what you're doing all right so that concludes the ip nat overload lab and stay in touch because i'm going to be doing some ospf eigrp funkiness and um yeah send me some love man give me some comments let me know what's going on in your world you know if you like the blog if you like the video notes let me know thank you see you later ospf and eigrp coming up next so come on